Samira um, with Yi from Pepper. How are you? How are you? How are you? I'm good. How are you? Nice. Good. Thank you. It's good to be in San Francisco, in cold San Francisco, in the Tenderloin. But let me tell you, there's nothing tender about this place. There was someone smoking crack in front of our bus earlier. That's crazy. I promise. It was, our bus driver was like, hey, you guys, come here. Check this out. This guy's smoking crack in front of the bus. I've never seen this before in real life, just in movies and whatnot, you know? So roll out, full, just shaking so hard, glass pipe just hitting and using our bus as like a wind blocker. I was like, are you, are you kidding me? We're, this is crazy, but uh, I guess it happens here all the time. Like, huh. but, uh, yeah. yeah, well, tend to, tend to one, I mean, what can you say? Yeah. Okay, so you guys are originally from Hawaii. Yeah, yeah, from Kona, yeah, Hawaii. Now... It's the, the west side of the big island. Yeah, very nice. Yeah. So now you guys live in SoCal, right? Yeah, yeah, we, since it was May of 1999, I can't believe how long it's been. Time was flying as you guys and all you younger people out there, as you will realize, as you get older and older, the years just start flying by. One year nowadays seems like a summer vacation in high school, which was three months. So it's, it's crazy. Um, but May of 99, we moved over here and we've pretty much been living in like uh, North County, San Diego and South Orange County for the majority of the time we've been in San Diego. Yeah, so is the music scene really different in Hawaii and SoCal? Yeah, that's pretty much the main reason we moved from um, Hawaii because the music scene's like very minuscule over there. There's not like a ton of places to play. Um, in a sense, like, you know, you're, you're on this island in the middle of the Pacific Ocean and, you know, you can only drive around so many times and play the few places there are so many times. So um, it's kind of like a bummer in one sense because there's so many talented um, artists out in Hawaii, like uh, there's a like a subgenre called Hawaiian music, which is like Hawaiian's take on Jamaican music. Basically, it's like Hawaiian reggae, uh, and uh, uh, like some of these Hawaiian bands are brilliant, like s some of the most beautiful voices and whatnot. So in that aspect, it's kind of a bummer because some of them will never leave the state, or maybe even leave the island that they're on, and they'll just play there, and and not a lot of people will hear them. And, and another thing for all you young bands. Just get in a van and hit the road and play as many shows as you can, and that's the best way to build a band, in my opinion. We have a record label too called Law Records, and that's it's Law Records credo right there, people. Tour, tour, tour. You gotta go out and see the people that are supporting you, face to face, hug them, shake their hand. So that's what we're all about. That's we're, awesome. we're really all about it. All about touring. And so you you guys played on um, at Warp Tour in yeah. 2001 and also this year 2007. Yeah. yeah. So um, do you notice that Warp Tour changed? At all? Oh, it's big time! It's yeah. it's massive. It I can't I can't believe how big that tour is now. It's like it's really cool because what Kevin Lyman does with that tour, the um, founder of that tour, is he's really all about giving bands chances and 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 bring it. I mean, it's a huge national tour that's got tons of eyes on it, and I mean he'll bring a band that no one's ever heard of that. He either was turned on to by another band that, that, that he hangs out with or likes, and um, and it's just real cool because it's a huge platform for young bands, and it's a huge platform I think for fans in general to check out new music. And you're guaranteed gonna meet whatever band you're going to Warp Tour to see. You're pretty much guaranteed gonna meet them there because it's like bands play for a half hour, then you go to your merch booth and you hang out and take pictures, yeah. sign stuff for a while. So. It's real, it's real cool, I think, on both ends as far as bands go and as far as fans go. And I think the biggest difference was definitely just the size of it this year. Is when we did it in 01, it was probably like 25 or 30 buses, and this year it's like 90 buses or, or like nearing 100 buses. And um, the, There's stages that are pretty much as big as the main stages are. There are like side stages now. The one thing that's dearly missed uh, about Warped Tour is there's no more Volcom stage. Which we, we actually, that's how we started in 2001 was the stipulation was we had to set up and break down the Volcom stage every day. And that, that was our way of getting on the tour. And it was, yeah, it was, it was, it was, I would never take it back to the world because I think we really like, I, I believe heavily in paying your dues, you know, to, to, to things and we, we paid our dues heavily that summer. And, I mean, at the time though, it was like, wow, this is, we didn't know what touring was either. We thought that's what it was going to be like. We were like, are you kidding me? Like. We're gonna die in a few years if this is what touring's like. It's, it's just so heavy. So, um, but that that set us up, I think, and like it was the hardest tour we've ever done. And like nowadays, tours that might have might seem might have seemed harder if we didn't do that. 
aren't as hard because we always think back to that and we're like that's why this year I'm more towards like a vacation where like well we're not in a van we have a bus we don't got to set up any stage or anything so it was, it was it was real fun and got to hang out with bands that I mean we pretty much have idolized and respect like Pennywise, Bad Religion, Floggy Molly, big it up. Okay, so you guys have re recently uh, published your phone number, your personal phone number on online right. for the fans. Right. Yeah. So, people, you... people. Yeah, it's, I guess it's some uh, new new service that um, it's basically kind of like a my like a MySpace for phones almost or something like that. It seems like like people can leave you messages. We check them. Um, it's kind of new, so we haven't responded to any anything yet. It's okay. like we we put it up and all of a sudden there was like a thousand messages or something. So we're like, whoa. Yeah. So what kind of messages have uh, there's, I mean, there's a lot of the standard, just like, hey, love you guys, like, can't wait to see you on this date, or the show was really good. Anything crazy? Kind of the kind of the standard ones you see on like MySpace and stuff. But yeah, there's some creepy ones too. <laughs> like that's why I was like, kind of when we first got it, we we're like, we we're like, oh, this is weird. But we heard that Dave Mustaine from Megadeth does it, <laughs> so we're like, eh, well, I guess anything Megadeth does, it's awesome. gotta be pretty cool. Yeah. So anyway, but um, yeah, I mean, you know, music affects people in like trippy ways sometimes. Yeah. Where it's, I mean, I guess it's like, you know, it, it, it just stokes people out and I think it's an emotional reaction to music that people have. And yeah, people can get kind of weird sometimes. Hey, we love you for supporting the music, but come on. <laughs> on that note, thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, you guys, if Pepper is ever touring in your town, be sure to check him out. And thanks for watching another segment of Cal TV Music.